Welcome to episode number 32. And in this week's brilliant business interview, you'll discover the following three entrepreneurial insights. Number one, why with the right attitude and mindset, devastating events can turn out to be blessings in disguise, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. Number two, the power of having honest conversations with your business partners and what can happen if you let things fester and go unsaid. And number three, the importance of crafting time not just to work on your client's business, but on your own. So stay tuned for all of that and so much more on this week's episode of The Truth About Business. I'm Benjamin Brain, and by day I'm a director of a multi-award winning family run business. And by night, I interview successful business owners to share their journeys, experiences and truths to serve as inspiration, motivation and first-hand education for like-minded entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to fast-track our own business success. This is the truth about business, told by those who have been there, done that and have the scars to prove it. From the good times to the bad, the marketing strategies and sales tactics to the productivity hacks and success habits. I'm here to give you the de-sugar-coated version of what it's really like and what really works. If you're thinking of starting a business or are already in business, I created this for you. So let's get started. In today's episode, I talk business with the four entrepreneurs at Think3. After all four had built a great relationship working together in a previous business, they were all faced with the challenge of being made redundant at the same time as the company went into administration. Determined not to let that get the better of them and with a total belief in their own ability, they decided to unite and took the plunge to launch a business together. That business is Think3, a forward-thinking creative design agency in Derby and the team has just celebrated its one-year anniversary. After a brilliant first year of being in business, they've not only broken through that initial 12-month barrier where 20% of new businesses fail, they've done it in style, doubling the size of the team and continuing to grow from strength to strength. But it's not been without its challenges, both as individuals and as a team. And in this episode, we take a fresh and really candid look into what it's like being in business, not just for the first time, but as a group of four friends who decided to risk it all and become the masters of their own destiny. So to find out more about Lee, Gaz, Grant and Luke, you can find them all on LinkedIn where they post regularly. Or you can visit the Think3 website at www.think3, which is the number 3.co.uk. Now, this interview was recorded before the business community had really started to feel the impact of the coronavirus, with many difficult decisions currently being made and so many worlds literally being turned upside down. This episode is a brilliant real life example of turning a negative situation into a huge opportunity that turns out to be a blessing in disguise. You know, success leaves footprints, so let's take a walk with four passionate, enthusiastic and inspiring business owners. This is the story of Think3. Okay, so Team Think3, thank you for joining me on The Truth About Business. This is going to be an interesting one. It's my first interview with four guests on this show. I did two with Philip and Stephen from Cuckoo the other day, but this is definitely taking it to another level. So I think what would be a great idea is if we could just... Do a round robin, tell us your name, a little bit about what you do, and then we'll get into the questions. Because first of all, congratulations to you guys. I know you've just passed your one year anniversary of being in business together, which is a massive achievement. So well done for that. And I think with this episode, it's going to be really interesting if we can take a real deep dive into that first year of being in business and explore the challenges and the triumphs and everything that you've been through to give a real sort of honest, fresh, raw look at what it's like to be in business, particularly as a group of four friends as well. So we'll start with you, Lee. Yeah, so I'm Lee, um, chartered accountant as a background, strangely, now working in the creative sector. Uh, my role predominantly, uh, Think3, is to focus around some of the strategic direction that we're going in. Spend a lot of my time working with our clients, being out there on the phone 24-7, making sure that actually we're doing a good job for what we're there to do. I'm Luke, media is my background, uh, so anything from going out filming with clients, photography, events, coming back, editing, basically making the content look beautiful for people. <laughs> I'm Grant, I'm the uh, creative director, 
Uh, I look after anything design, basically, anything that you see that's a brand that we've done, any website that we've done, uh, pretty much anything that's creative in that sense, I look after all of that. And I'm Gaz, so I'm the technical director here at Think3, working with the guys on anything technical, really, so in terms of background, websites, or anything like that, really, yeah. Okay, very good, thank you for that. So my first question is, how did all four of you meet? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So we uh, all used to work together. Lee actually used to be my manager. Uh, Gaz and Luke uh, used to be their manager. We were the kind of, me, Gaz and Luke were the creative output at the the previous business. And yeah, we actually reporting to to Lee. And from that point, kind of hit the fan a little bit and we uh, got made redundant due to, uh, it was no fault of our own, it was due to the business. And then me, Luke and Gaz carried on working together, thankfully. And that's kind of where it all started to, to go from there. I mean, one of the back one of the background things that we did, didn't we, when we were there, is that whilst the wider marketing team all sort of sat under my remit, we carved out a little creative team, yeah. which was actually the three of these guys with a couple of others, um, and kept that separate away from the core day to day marketing activity. And in t- internally, it became a separate creative business in its it's so right, didn't it? That's what we tried to do, yeah. That's what we, what we tried, tried to, to do. do. <laughs> so, so from that point of being made redundant then, how, what was the time frame between that and you guys saying, right, yeah, we're going to do this as a business, we're going to launch on I our mean, own? Kind of to be fair, we, we didn't really plan it, did we? I mean, just sort of two days. No, no. Yeah, no. I mean, it was weird because I sort of text Lee as soon as we were made redundant. Yeah. And I was just like, Lee... We got, we got to get the lads back together again because we are, we were such a close team, um, not just work colleagues. We were we were friends, you know. We, yeah. we spent so much time together, he, just not just in work, you know. We were, I mean, we went to Grant Stag do and all that sort of stuff. So we were we were very, really close. And I texted Lee and I was like, we need to get back together again because we're a strong team. We know we can, we know we can do a good job, and that's like kind of where it started. Um, yeah. But but we couldn't take it further yeah. because we just didn't have the means to um, financially or I don't think we were really we didn't feel almost strong enough to yeah I mean after obviously going through something like that you know mortgage kids you know your first thought is how am I going to pay bills so we all got offered a job quite <laughs> weirdly didn't we all quite together scary. and yeah, it came uh, out of nowhere really. yeah and then we got we, we was in an office in Long Eaton. Yeah, we were we were headhunted by a company based down in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, all, all four of you together. All three. All three. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. three. Yeah. yeah. So we we managed to stay together. And to be honest, we've we've had this conversation before. We don't think that Think Three would have happened if we had have gone our own separate ways. If you know what I mean. Like if if one of the guys had gone off somewhere else and life just gets away from you and it, it might not have happened so it, we we thank our lucky stars yeah, almost that, that that opportunity came came for us and so it was it was it was at that point that we sort of realized that uh, we we know we can do this so why don't we just give it a shot and so so you three were at the business in long eaton then yeah when did you come into the into the fold. I mean, yeah. it, it sort of followed on from that it conversation sort of, that yeah. we were having. So we, we got made redundant on a Thursday, I think he was, and yeah. then Gaz messaged me on the Saturday saying, "Shall we do it? Can we do it?" And I was sort of like, "Well, yeah, why not?" I, was, <laughs> I think I was sat at home working out, okay, what move do you make next, and trying to work out what was the right thing to do because, like with Grant, you've got your house, you've got your mortgage to pay for. You try and navigate your way through as best you can those difficult times and coming out the back of it, if we were going to do it, there was the perfect opportunity for us to get together and do something about it. It was unlikely, I don't think, that if we'd have all gone off in different directions, as Luke said, that you'd end up coming back together yeah. and actually just risk it because that's what starting a business is about. It's about you've got to take a risk Okay, you can weigh some things up and try and balance out the probabilities of whether it will work or not, but fundamentally, you've just got to have the guts and the balls as a group of four lads to go say. and just... A lot of balls there. <laughs> 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 you, you've got to have the balls to, to just bite the bullet and go for it. I don't think yeah. we would have done if it wasn't us four as well because of the fact that we are so close and we are so 
in it and invested that we wouldn't have done it if we had gone separate ways. From that initial idea of coming up with Think3, was this something that you were building on the side whilst you were in, in this new employment in a, opportunity? In our downtime. Yeah, yeah, it was evenings, weekends and stuff. Like We, we, had, we had a look at our, um, our old group chat and we've, we've sent 10,000 odd messages <laughs> in evenings and weekends and stuff just talking about it, thinking it through what... I what's think, what's the right step? I think at least eight thousand of those messages must be sent in in the evenings because we were just constantly. Just it was weird, yeah. You like sometimes look at your phone and be like, "God, what are these guys did literally like, like eighty like miss <laughs> like, I mean, and it was all talking about what we're going to do, where we're going to. It was you know what I mean. It was, and like I said, we were really fortunate. We got to kind of stay together, so we kind of could still communicate, you know, what it was that we wanted to do and and everything like that. And Lee, as you said, was kind of there and just kept pushing the idea and. Here we are now. I kept working up papers nice around, right, what can we do on this and what do we do with that? Do we need a strategy put in place? So I wrote one, I looked at it again last week and I was like, well, actually, we didn't really do anything with that, did we? I just wrote one for the <laughs> sake of writing. Which is often the case with these. Sort of <laughs> yeah, you just yeah. come up with something, you come up with the paper, we had a budget, we had this, we had everything else all set in place, ready to go. And then we went for it. <laughs> and then, well, actually, we've never even really gone back and no, looked no, at those no. again. Not once. The strategy's changed, of course it has, because we just have conversations as we go along now and trying to work out what next, where do we go, what else are we going to do? Um, Did you find that exercise useful though to begin with, just to get thoughts on paper and start to sort of define a, a path for you with for what me, you would be doing? Yeah, I mean that that was my and I'm used to that. My background was sort of having those sorts of meetings and understanding that you've got to have a plan in place to be able to execute something and have something measurable against it. I think that was sort of where I would have looked at those sorts of Do things. You know what? It kind of made it feel it, more real. Yeah, so did from it? our side it just was like, Okay, we have a plan. Okay, even though we haven't actually looked necessarily back to which the strategic side, yeah, it was it's like not just it, the concept in your head now, you've got something. It was exactly that, paper, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, where did the name Think Three come from then? I think it must have been within the first week or so. We sat there and we just went, well, what, what name? We've got a complete free choice now. What, what do we go with? It just and worked. It just worked. Yeah. Okay, there's four of us, not three of us. We can get over that. But we, we, if you look at the, the sort of industries, you've got media. You've got the technology and you've got the design, so it is. It came in the three, yeah. in terms of the creative Too side. Really. Yeah, and also on your website, I noticed you've got the, the three different exactly. criteria. So it's that design, yeah. build, market, which yeah. are the three. So everything sort of comes in three. I now. mean, do you know what? Everything at the start was like, right? How do we make it three? <laughs> right, how, do we, how do we literally? It's, it's not it very just... often that we agree. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> we sit there and we we. We deliberate just and we worked, talk, didn't it? It just, well, yeah, it just it was, worked, and we we were all like, we had the throwback to the the three A's bit, and the think was just actually what's going to put something at the forefront of somebody's mind, and when you're thinking about looking for something yeah. or doing whatever you you're yeah. wanting to do and wanting to achieve, actually you've got to think about it and think three. It just works. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it just, it just works. It just rolls off the tongue. It does. It works for <laughs> it's us. A, it's a conversation starter as well, because people ask why, why you call Think3. Especially there's when there's four of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a conversation starter. Is this three of us, yeah, yeah, immediately. Yeah. So a year later down the line, then after you put these plans on paperly, the services that you guys were offering to begin with, has that changed much? Has it evolved over the months and year, or is it a very similar offering to what you'd originally planned it to be? I think... Thing. If I go back to that original paper that I wrote, sort of November 2018, it would have been. It's fundamentally the same services, but a very different approach in terms of the dynamic of the customer that we're working with. Because originally we were going to look at the small businesses, it was going to be high volume, we were looking at almost... A subscription type approach for small businesses so it made it cost effective we were going to be different in that sense and, and come to market with something that was different to everybody else was doing but when we took the plunge and, and made the jump from paper to reality it was we got a client who was lo who was wanting to work with us we we're in a position where they were going to sign up for six months that gave us the security and give the, the guys the security to, to quit their day jobs um, because we knew we got some money coming in at that point. So it very quickly changed, and that strategy paper now, I think I've probably read it twice maybe <laughs> since, is 
nowhere near where we are now. It's very different. We're at the other end of the market with some of our clients. We're, we're not we're not necessarily dealing with with small businesses, but we do. We've got some larger businesses in our in our mix of who we're working with, which is interesting. But very different now in terms of our approach to how we work with them, because a lot of it. I mean, for me, it's all around, and I think your dad was saying it yesterday, it's a lot around the customer experience, that corporate mentality of bringing that to a business. So I've always been the same. My phone's always on 24-7. If clients want to ring me at 11 o'clock at night, they know they can. If they've got a problem, that that's just how it works. I mean, these guys will tell you I'll never switch off on anything. And being embedded within some of those clients and those businesses which is the way that we work now we are just an extension of them we're not seen as oh we're the outsource we're the agency we're actually part of the business and part of their own decision making processes go their own marketing department yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's why it works yeah that's why it works it's just as much about understanding the creative side than it is understanding the strategic side behind their business and i think that's why the four of us work so well together because you've got lee who gets the business more than we do, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah the strategic side, 100% business And right. then you've got three different skill sets that complement that. It's really just ma- it's marrying, marrying the two together. It's getting your creative objectives and your business objectives. And Aligned, right, yeah. how, how do we get these to... How do we get these to work together? How do we get one to affect the other and, and at, in, at the end of the day drive what the business is wanting? Yes, and going back to those early days then, before you'd formally, you know, you'd all quit your jobs and you'd started on this full time, did you wait until that point to actually bring clients on board or were you actually onboarding clients whilst you were employed as well, building the business up in the background? We we weren't really... Weren't actively? No, not actively. I mean, like Lee mentioned, we had an opportunity where someone was sort of willing to give us six months, wasn't it? It's almost... I had the contract on my email. Yeah. And it wasn't signed. <laughs> it wasn't signed. And, <laughs> and was, this, was this a conversation like, right, boys, we've got this contract. If we go for it, then everybody needs to exactly. jump on yeah. board. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. We, you stick to what you're doing and we miss out on building this mm. business together. That was, yeah, that was the conversation. Yeah, it, was. it was, I think we it was a, lot, a lot of sleepless nights yeah. and umming and ahhing and thinking, yeah. right, we've got, we've got this conversation. It, it could come through. It probably will come through. But we're also... We're, Still we're a sat, risk. Yeah, it's a risk. A risk. We're sat here... We're, off, we're, we're walking away from nice, cushy 30k salaries, and obviously, Gaz and myself are quite young. Grant's young; he's got a young family. But just yeah, it was it was taking that leap of faith really that was one of the hardest parts. Just actually going, yeah, you know, we are we are good enough to do this. We can give it a shot, and. What, why not us? Every, pretty everyone sure else. My, pretty sure my wife was fed up with me by the end of it because it was literally just a case of uh, every night talking to her saying, Do you think we should do it? Do, do you I think, think it's a lot of it was like knowing where those next six months were actually going to come from. So obviously, we had, even if we had this contract, where was that next six yeah, months going to come from? We didn't, we didn't know. Yeah. And then you've got the risk of them, the client not paying on time, missing an invoice. It's all that yeah. worry that obviously. I mean, the majority of it was for, like, Grant, because we're all so close. Yeah, I, was, I was a selfish one. <laughs> yeah. like, he was the most financially dependent on a salary. Obviously, like Luke's mentioned, me and Luke are very young, so we don't have much in terms of, well, we don't have any mortgage or anything like that, any commitments. So we were all right, but it was, you know, caring about Grant, really. But... The person who sent us that contract doesn't know that conversation took place. I was about to say, do you think they have any idea of the implication that contract had? Absolutely no, not. It was probably no. the be all and end all of starting thing through. And the, the good thing is as well, they're, they're still a client now, so yeah. they've they've. It was obviously it, it was obviously the right move to make. <laughs> yeah. And I'm close. I'm close with that person, and that person knows that um, I'll always stand by her on everything. And she was the one who saw the opportunity and the potential with us and backed us for it and for that I'll be forever grateful to her just as, yeah, just as all, all um, but yeah she doesn't know <laughs> I was sat on that contract for a good two days going sleepless nights are we or aren't we you've got a choice to make boys we either sign it and go for it or I turn around and say 
thanks but no thanks. The best decision we it. made was that we go ahead with it. Yeah. Well, you pulled the trigger and did it. So day yeah. one then of Think3 officially being in business for <laughs> yeah. themselves. If you, haven't, if you haven't been there on opening day of a business where you are the business owners and this is your baby now, you imagine it to be some amazing experience <laughs> well, and it goes the way that you wanted it to. Day one. How, how was it? What we, was day one like? I think everyone was sat on their individual couches with their laptops in front of them <laughs> on, a, on a group call we saying, like, right, to, okay, what, to get do, what do we do now? Right, okay, we need to find somewhere to meet because obviously being creative, it's so collaborative. You're working yeah. closely with each other all the time yeah. and we, we really quickly realised that being separate for eight work. hours of the day wasn't going to work. It's weird because we've been together, and we, us three have been together every, I mean, for, for years now, like every single day pretty much, you know, Monday to Friday, and then all of a sudden to, to start a business and then we're separate. It was, it was, it was a really bit bizarre. bizarre. <laughs> it was really a bit bizarre. bizarre. And uh, I think me and Luke were going to Grant's house. Yeah. We were like meeting up at cafes. We were meeting up at KFCs. We I were remember you, me and you going to KFC. KFC. <laughs> and like we were doing, we were working from every which place and it just, what it just didn't work. And then we were like, we need, to, we need a place to meet up. And it ended up being Lee's Conservatory. <laughs> yeah, we, we which is like a jungle. Stuff. Which is like a jungle in there. <laughs> so Lee's, Lee's partner's a gar- like does gardening, doesn't he? Um, in your conservatory, there's like loads of plants and everything, and we're just sort of crammed in there. It's good for your well-being. Yeah. 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 yeah, plenty of oxygen for brain, <laughs> brain power. Yeah, that's it. I remember it twice weekly, Tuesdays, Thursdays. Right, I'll say, get up early, run the hoover around, the boys come around, <laughs> make sure everything's all tidy, put away, clear the dining table of all the plants and everything, chuck those out in the garden, um, and that worked. It, it worked for a while. Yeah, for a bit. I think we managed about eight weeks before we sort of went mm, this is getting a bit more difficult now because there was more work coming we were finding it more and more difficult to try and work collaboratively together on things and the dynamics different at home as it is in, as it is in an office or something like it's difficult for sort of to concentrate sometimes obviously you've got everything from the TV to you know kitchen and you just end up not working properly the dogs, I dogs say, yeah. two, two dogs you have the dogs running around distractions <laughs> yeah curling up under the table yeah. and getting in the way. So how long was it then until you moved into your first location where you were all working together? Was it May? Yeah, so we started sort of like the first week of March and we were in our office the first week of May. Did you have a very specific idea of what you were looking for or was it just we need a place, let's get something that was, yeah, that available? Was, that was, yeah, it was just whatever there is. And the boys have been already around and looked at um, Marble Hall, which is where we're at now, in their previous role actually. Um, so we sort of knew what that was like. We knew the size of it. Everything was all included. Parking, <laughs> a parking, parking was here, <laughs> which is it's it's yeah. a big thing. And there was four of us. So mm. we got a 400 square foot office through Connect Derby, internet included, parking included. But it was another financial commitment to make again, on top of everything else that we're doing. And when you're Starting off a business and you've got to buy, you've got to buy kit, you've got to buy business insurance, you've got to set up a bank account, you've got to make sure everything's all in the right place and you've ticked all the boxes that you've got to do. To then go and Add sign a f- overhead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that six months of nice cushion slowly turned, well, <laughs> not slowly, quickly turned into two months. So we had we had to get the clients rolling in and yeah. get the cash rolling in so we could we could carry on and sustain ourselves really. And where, where did you find your, your next client after you'd got this six month contract which sort of launched the whole thing? How did you find your next client? One of the main things we did straight away was to look over the people that we knew because clearly we'd been worked in a large business at that point with 450 staff. So there were lots of people in there that we knew and worked with that all then gone in different directions. So we'd started to reach out and tap into our own networks of who might want our services, lots that wouldn't want them because they've gone into different directions, different sectors. Um, But we did. And looking if we've we've kept close with quite a few people that we used to work with that have now gone into new businesses and have been entirely supportive of what we're doing. I mean, my LinkedIn posts every Saturday morning get volumes of traction on it and a lot of those are from people that we used to work with that are following the journey. They've almost become brand ambassadors for Mm. us. They're they're there 
talking about us. We're a small startup business. They want to help us out. Vouching for us. They, yeah. they know that we're we're a tight knit group of guys, and we're we're happy to get stuck in with whatever whatever comes our way. One of the, one of the next things that we did was right at the start was one of the best things that we ever did was join marketing derby. Definitely was getting ourselves along. Obviously pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones, going along to networking events. Introducing yourself as a business owner, which still, even a year later, still feels weird. Had you done anything like that before going to networking events in previous roles that you'd had? Not, Not really, particularly. No. 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 no, no. It was it was definitely a, a first for for all of us, I'd say. And it was, yeah, it was one of the best decisions that we've made. It just allowed us to grow our network even more. And I mean, I can it. remember the first networking event. It was just me, Luke, and Grant, yeah, and. You went to the Derby business. It's coming tomorrow. It's coming yeah. tomorrow, actually. And we, uh, being completely honest, we Thursday. didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> we just sort of stumbled around this expo and we're just like handing out business cards and just like, are we doing the right thing? Like, I don't really know. Um, I think I got sent a photo of you on the Grant go on, carts. Grant was on the VR. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> To be uh, fair, the marketing derby piece again. The, the, the other good thing that came with that was the perception piece. Like it kind of, we were then put amongst other businesses, businesses yeah. in derby. Like we were straight against our competitors that, you know, that beforehand we weren't. And our logo was right there. And it, again, for, from a perception piece, that was that I think helped us out massively at the start. No, yeah, that was a big focus for us. I think in those first three or four months, I remember saying we used to have conversations all the time about it. We need to appear bigger than what we are because there's only four of us and actually we'll do whatever it takes to get the name out there and I think well I don't know you you, you assume from the inside but actually I think we did a, an alright job I think of, we've done of a, doing it I think we've done a really good job and that's just saying it from our perspective but the amount of feedback we get from people saying you're out there and they're seeing the stuff I mean because it's difficult saying it from the in, inside isn't it because we don't always see it yeah. but from people speaking towards us they're, they're saying that your perception is is brilliant. Like you look like you're doing re- a really great job, and you know, I, I just don't know how we managed to do it in that sh- like short space of time in a uh, year. What are some of the tactics and, and strategies that you use to give that perception? I think it was going back to what what Lee said. I think it was actually just going out there. Yeah, going out there, but also kind of leaning on people that you yeah. know. I think I mean we we, we a massive advocate for hours. You know, was doing that. Well, was doing the thirty for thirty um, Mercia image campaign. campaign. Mm. We we knew Amanda from previous kind of just job, and mm. I, I spoke to her kind of actually more from a, an advisory piece, kind of like from a business owner to a, a new business owner. Like, what would you recommend? Is there any you know any sort of tips and stuff? And when, as soon as she mentioned the thirty for thirty, it was like Perfect. get us involved. Yeah. Get us involved. Like puts us literally. In businesses, like filming businesses, and like it was, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was the big. first event we sponsored, wasn't it? So it was a bit. It was a big event in mm. June last year. There were lots of. I mean, Smith Partnership were involved in it. The Cricket Club was where the garlic dinner was held. There was lots of small businesses, and actually, it was all for charity. So it was an event throughout the entire month where people were really getting behind it, and we were pretty much at every single. One of Amanda's events With during your the month. coral polo <laughs> yeah. T-shirt. Yeah. We're like, we need to get <laughs> we need to get Luke a T-shirt that says film crew on it and get our logo on it because that is like how we'll put our image out there. It works. Yeah, we, well, yeah. we did we did the scale electrics tonight. You went to Morley Hayes to go and film the ladies' luncheon. Yeah. We went on the ale trail thing, tour May nights, and then it all all came together with the final event of the cricket. Yeah. Yeah, Final. which was a, which was a very proud moment for us, like for, as a new business, to be able to sit down and to bring our bring our other halves with us and sit down for a nice black tie dinner and actually celebrate being there as a team and as a company alongside, like like you say, other other yeah. massive businesses within Derby, and, and that was a very proud moment where we sort of. By no means did we think we'd made it, but it was, <laughs> it was leaning in the right direction. You know you're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was sort of, a, it came right at the end of, of, of our first three months yeah. in business. And June had been absolutely hectic, running around, doing all these events. But we made sure we were there. We were in Derby, traipsing across the city late at night, weren't we, following around on the Ale Trail. But then having the gala dinner at the cricket club, 
where there were lots of other businesses that, and big names in Derby where you'd sit and you go, actually, they've got two or three people there. We had an entire table for Think3. <laughs> So it was just our name, it was our table. It was a proud moment. It was. It was a proud moment, it sounds We daft, filled a table. table. Actually, but as part of that perception thing we were talking about, yeah. to have a full table, okay, it was us, our other half, <laughs> and a few people that we could find to bring along. But to be amongst the big names in Derby who didn't have a full table, and we did, we sat there going, yeah, that's the Think Three table. That, that's nobody else's table. We're not guests of anybody. And you were there filming it as well. And there's that photograph of the four of us, and that was Still just such a it. yeah, it's such a proud moment for the four of us as friends, turned business owners. It was quite emotional actually. So going back to that initial transition, then to to start in Think Three, you guys, well, you'd, you'd all been in employment before. So yeah. with employment, there comes a structure. There comes targets. You know, you're there at nine. You're there at five. Yeah. Gone home at five thirty. Then all of a sudden, you're a self-employed business owner. There are no restrictions. Nothing. There's no, you have to be here then. Was that a challenge dealing with that? How, how did that feel going from sort of the employed mentality to the self-employed mentality? It, it was definitely a change. But like, like Lee said previously, obviously, like you, you just don't switch off. You, you find yourself... 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, still checking emails, still answering phone calls. I think it was just a bit surreal as well, yeah. that transition, because obviously you go from, like you say, like that structure to just being completely free in that approach. So, you know, we, we, we weren't getting there at 9, we were getting there earlier. We were working 24 hours a day, making sure that it was just non-stop. I mean, we, we were literally in that first, I mean, we're still, still doing now, yeah. and still yeah. now. I think the other side of it as well, I think because there's four of us, it's almost, especially in the early days, it's like you want to make sure that you're giving everything that you can because there's three other guys yeah. that also that depend on you giving 100%, 110% every single time. So I think the fact that there's four of us, that kind of actually was a more of a positive because, like I said, it kind of almost, you had a bit more weight on your shoulders to kind of be like, let's do everything that we can to make this actually work. It's definitely more weight on your shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, if you're starting off with four business owners in a new business, you've got four mouths to feed, really, haven't you? Whereas yeah. compared to a single business owner or even two business owners, it's still half the effort that you need to generate the income to, to satisfy everybody's requirements. So obviously there's pros and there's cons. What are some of the benefits that you guys have found of being four business owners that have already built such great relationships with each other and are now building a business for yourselves. I mean, it's, it's, sometimes it's less about thinking about from a business perspective and more thinking about like the support from like, a mental perspective. It's very straining having to work constantly and for sometimes not a massive amount of reward in terms of finance or whatever, whatever you consider reward. And being able to have three mates that you know for a fact would give everything up in a heartbeat to make sure that that you that we were all fine was the biggest thing for me and like knowing that no matter what we will get through what we need to get through in order to make things work i think that it's it's not about necessarily skill set or anything like that i mean obviously we have all of that but it it was the actual for me, it was the emotional side, the emo emotional investment in each other that allowed us to get through it all. And like, we still have times where it becomes sort of difficult, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're top, we're so top heavy that it's natural. I mean, we've only just have... sort of equaled out, haven't we? Well, we've got, we're, we're, all, we're all so close, but then equally, we all do have our own opinions. Yeah. So naturally, exactly. there's going to be moments where we butt heads. I mean, if there's ever a thing, it normally is that me and you normally agree with something, and these do normally agree with something, yeah. and it's like, um, you the know. Two L's together and the two G's. Yeah, together. two L's and two G's. And <laughs> oh, it, yeah, just, it, just, yeah. it just, it's just naturally done that. But I, I, I back up what, what Guy said, to be fair, is that actually just being able to, I think, lean on each other at times when you are struggling, and it might be anything, it might just be, it might be workload, or it might be, you know, pressure or whatever you can just always lean on someone. I think that's a massive thing yeah. for, for Whilst for it's us. been it's been a hectic first twelve months and will continue to be, without doubt, the way that we're going. I think being able to sometimes get up on a Sunday morning and go, you know what, I'm having six hours off today. 
and you get to go and do what you want if you need to go and do something first thing in the morning and you don't rock up till half past ten that's all right you've got the flexibility to do that it comes with the challenges then knowing that you've got three other people in the business that you've got to try and support so trying to make sure that we're all pulling an equal weight you have to have a lot of trust in each other yeah yeah to to know that you are all doing your equal amount and that one of you isn't just skiving off all the time and the, the three of you are, are pulling them along so what is it that you think that you four have got that sort of has gelled you together and, you, and gives you that trust amongst each other? I think you sort of see it though, don't you? I mean, because we were four, you know, we, and like Grant mentioned earlier, like we were all putting in 110% to make sure each one of us knew what we were doing. It was so, it would be obvious for someone to be not pulling the weight, if you know what I mean. And we were all so invested in the idea uh, because we, we literally gave up a job to to do this venture you know we we gave up a, a salary that we would have every month coming in to no security whatsoever and like i think that that's it for me really i mean there has been there has been times there was, there was a, recently where actually we felt like we were kind of slightly drifting apart, drifting mm-hmm. apart. and it, you you could actually feel kind of that we were drifting mm-hmm. apart at that point and then i don't i don't mean it as dramatically as that <laughs> but we were pulling in different directions and it, it is more time. noticeable yeah. when there's four of you and there's four of you pulling in different directions and we had a sit down didn't we, for a, a, quite a few hours and it was literally about kind of right okay let's sit down let's be honest with each other let's talk about our strengths and weaknesses amongst each because other because the fact was that we hadn't stopped in that time yeah. we'd all been full running for con- constantly for months and we hadn't had the time to actually sit down and look at what we achieved and look at where we were and look at the positives and the negatives because there were negatives between yeah, one another and definitely. as Grant mentioned we were starting to see a bit of a drift in direction some and some cracks. It was the Christmas break it, that did it. Yeah it yeah. was yeah. It was having 10 days away from each other because that I don't think there's been a single day <laughs> in the last 12 months when we haven't either seen each other spoken. messaged each other <laughs> spoken to each other and over christmas we actually said actually let's let's switch off let's have a break and we did for 10 days and there were days when we weren't talking to each other but when you've got that time to sit and think and reflect about it you come back in the new year going right let's get on with it and we've got jobs lined up where yeah. we were literally straight back to it, doing the day job of what needed to be done to work with our clients. So we weren't talking about that, we were, we were doing the doing. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, I think- it, it was a massive piece. Like we, we sat down and we had a real open and honest conversation, obviously being four young lads, mental health is a massive thing in the media nowadays and everything, promoting mental wellbeing and health. And we, we started to realize that whilst Yes, the client is primary, and getting that getting that job done and getting that income in is absolutely paramount. We needed to take some time to step back and actually look at ourselves and understand that if we carry on the way that we're going, we, we might not be here in six months' yeah. time or a year's time. And I think that and was it, the reality, wasn't it? It was that realisation that if we don't actually get into gear, then we might not have this. And like this is... This doesn't compare to anything. H- having your own business and being able to have that freedom, working with your friends, it, it doesn't compare. Imagine going back into a nine-to-five job that f- four in four different employers. It just, we, I, I mean, I'd, I'll say I'd, I'd hate it. I need to see your faces every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so that conversation then, going back to that conversation when you come back after the Christmas break, was there like a single event that suddenly triggered this thought? That triggered this thought that you guys need to have a sit down and have a conversation or was it an accumulation of just things that have been happening? It was an accumulation and then I, I kind of messaged one night and I was, like, it. I was like, do you know what, I'm, I'm fed up, we're having a chat, we're going to knock our heads together and we're going to sort this out basically and, and we, we did. It, it, was, it was the most positive was, real chat I think we've ever had. Yeah, we'd, never, we'd never sat down and fully understood each other's personal reasons as to why we were doing it mm-hmm. we always knew we were good that's it we just wanted to do it and we'd get on with it and do it but to 
sit and listen to actually why Luke wanted to do Think Three and be a business owner, and why Gaz and why Grant were doing it, and and why you were doing it, and why yeah. I was doing it, and and you sit there and you'd go, okay, we've never really had that conversation before. Yeah. It was an emotional conversation. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's an emotional. We needed a break. It did. We, we needed a break at the end of it where. Me and Luke went outside for a breather because it was <laughs> it was tough going, and we sort of kicked it off with it was a session around what do we done? Let's look back. Let's see what we've achieved in those first nine months at that point, which we'd, we'd done a lot, and it's been good. We'd literally been to we had a table at the Roundhouse for Christmas. We had a table of twelve at that time, so we found some more people to bring along. <laughs> But we'd come back and it was just like, okay, let, let's reassess where we're at. What do we need to do? What do we want to achieve this next year? And to have those honest conversations with each other collectively, where we could call one another out on things that they've done, not done, should have done, it was a tough, tough four-hour session we had going through all of that. And we looked at everything from strengths and weaknesses to just personal things that had happened over the course of the year. You know, you have to bring the personal aspects into it, don't you? Yeah, definitely. And out, out of that conversation, our, it birthed our, our values, our company values. Yeah. And we actually, we didn't go in there intending to, right, okay, we're going to have a session on working out our company values. We went in there and had a session of, right, okay, let's let's air this out. Let's get this talk not as for business owners, but as for people. They came from like, kind of what we wanted out of the business, mm. yeah. didn't it? It, the, the it, just, na- it just, just naturally sort of, happened. It, it was. It was. Happened. It was all the different we were, things. We were just writing that, down words, weren't we? Yeah. That we, we got a flip chart up with the white with a pen, as you do, and we were just literally writing down the words that were the most important things, I think, to us for the business and what we wanted to achieve out of it. And out of that came our six values for the business yeah. Yeah, I've done my research so they're creative family think motivate passion and proud Yeah. and so previous to that then I mean I've got about a million questions after that, <laughs> but previous when you haven't got those values defined is it sort of you know you've got four different personalities four different ambitions you've all got an idea of what you want this business to be but you've not communicated that with anybody else so there are conflicts and clashes but now you've got them down on paper you've got like a clear guide of of how you want this business to look and feel and that's brought you all together yeah massive yeah, absolutely yeah I, I, think it, I think it was a real positive change we've got a goal to aim towards now we've, yeah we've got something in our sights and we'll, we'll never achieve it no way but we've got something we've got that emotion driving us and obviously we've got the passion we've got the skill set that's driving us as well but having that personal emotion and knowing each each person sat here now why why they are here and the real reasons behind it was yeah really really beneficial to obviously getting us back on we'd, we'd strayed off we'd strayed way off the path we were in the deep woods and we got us back onto the path that we needed to be on to obviously to carry on and to to make it to our first birthday which obviously we're, we're massively massively proud about and just really being open and honest with ourselves and each other yeah. to the point where yeah it, it just it birthed those those values those company and it's I mean it's bizarre as well because obviously like one of our aims when we're working with businesses and we're looking at brands is actually to encourage them <laughs> to try and understand what their values are and what their vision is and, and that's one of the key things that we do it's one of the key things that I work with a, a business with uh, for and we, we really kind of never actually yeah. sounds completely bizarre, but from our own perspective, it was kind of because we had that client and we had that six months, and we knew that we had to keep because there's four of us, we had to keep going, keep going. We had totally neglected what it was that we make sure that businesses put at the forefront. Oh, massive. We, and, were, we and, were running before we could walk. Yeah, we, were, it, we, we were sprinting before we could walk. Well, that's yeah. it, and it's these exercises like defining the company vision and the values that when you've got that to do, or a project to work on for a client, the project to work on for the does. client will take every time. Every time. Every time. Yeah. Yeah, but it's carving the time to create these business foundations that then help you to do everything else better. I mean, there's a reason why so many businesses don't 
succeed past whatever it is the first year the first two years yeah, so that, well, I looked at it before you guys came on so it's 20% fail within yeah, the first year the first, I mean, so really? we, yeah. we could have quite easily been one of those yeah. we could have been at that when we were hit that nine month point and we were at that the brick wall and we, trying to work our way back. I remember saying I think I said it to Grant this is going to go one way or another we're either going to come through this or this is the end it was odd because we had the thing is we had so much work, <laughs> <We did. laughs> and it was like, it was, yeah. but it was it was just the kind of like I said, it was just the cracks that were were happening, and all it took was it was strange an open and like, conversation. all of our kind of direction, it did actually line up, but it there were just cracks in places. I think we just needed to chat. We just, we needed, just needed to, we just needed to understand to where each of our heads were at in order to align that vision. And I remember I remember t- talking to you the, the night before I actually even messaged. Yeah, and I remember saying. Even that could go one way or the other. Either it could open up the floodgates for us all to literally <laughs> it could just be completely like, you know, wrong direction, and and it and it didn't. Yeah. I think we were all we we're all thinking it. We we're all you know, and that kind of like I said, that instigated that that whole process, which was having that open and honest chat. What um, do you think would have happened if you hadn't had that chat? We I don't. I don't want to say it today. I don't want. I don't. I don't want to say it was as soon as that. I don't. Think, I don't want to say it was like going to just suddenly just. Collapse. I think over time it I probably it, would have fizzled out yeah I think because we needed to know that we were all invested and know that we all had the same mission and vision as to where I think three was going to go yeah and it, do you know what it, if anything like we, we keep talking internally about how we had our first year as teenage years mm. yeah and now it's you know it's, it's, we've, if, if from that conversation I felt like there was a lot of maturity that came off the back of it mm. and like you know we, we haven't got necessarily wealth of experience of being business owners but that really was a an eye of kind point. of like turning yeah. point for the business definitely and so so from that point onwards now having seen the benefits of being open and honest and raw with each other do you have a monthly meet where you you have these conversations or is it just allowed you to be more open with each other on, on a regular we are on, just, a, on a constant basis we are just generally open with each other i think yeah i agree i think it's made us more honest with each yeah. other it's made us more proactive in in because you again, it's that whole kind of you you might plan stuff or you might say right in a, over the next three months we're going to do X Y and Z, and then the, the client's project takes priority over it. I think it's kind of made us more proactive in actually thinking about us and what we're going to be doing. You know, we've recently launched a new website. We've got some. We've just recently took on someone else, which is going to actually look after That's some of our marketing, media, and yeah. it's actually pushing us out there rather than just working on. The client projects. So I think it's kind of made us just aware of the fact that, I mean, for the first year, this is amazing. We never actually pushed out any work that we we'd done until the website launched. Literally Tuesday. Last in terms, you haven't promoted any of a. This is nothing, what we've done for clients nothing, nothing. And yet we've we've been growing in terms of like client base. We just we just but we haven't. And it's not that's not a purposeful tactic. We should have really been <laughs> pushing it out, but we just didn't because we were so busy doing. And now we've got a point where we've got a website, we've got, you know, uh, hired someone internal that actually can look after that side of things as I mean, well. Yeah, it's, and it's definitely pushes. like the staff that we've hired, oh, we yeah. have been blessed by the staff that we've got mm. because they, they fit in, which is so important for us. Uh, I think we, we've always uh, we've agreed and we've always spoken about the fact that if we're hiring a member of staff, they have to be able to fit in because you can upskill someone, you can't change the way that someone thinks. Yeah. And that is fundamental. It's, it's one of those core values, it's family. Like we, We've taken on, not just as four business owners, an extended family, but yeah. that, that extends down to, our, down to our staff. And obviously having this conversation that we had amongst ourselves, we, we, we went back and we thought, them, yeah. we thought, they, these guys are probably having some of the similar thoughts and we op- we we opened up that forum between us to right okay we we are we we've always known that we we're top heavy and like we say we've only just sort of balanced those numbers out yeah we're up to, to eight now we're up to a total of eight of us and yeah. we literally <laughs> so it's just four it's, four. it was getting them those guys to obviously they're in it just as much as we are they're in their day to day we needed to be transparent with them yeah and, understanding and, and, where where our heads are at where their heads are at it's like obviously. you mentioned Luke obviously like mental health. He's massive. He's so important, and we'd experienced those problems. So, like Luke mentioned, we needed to make sure that they were on the right page because mm. you know people don't talk about these things, and it is difficult. And it's just making sure that 
and they know that they have people to talk to. And we were at one point until we've literally just hired mainly, we were seven guys. Yeah. Seven guys in a room. Which mental health, health for the minute. Yeah. Mental yeah. health for the minute yeah. as well is all about, all about men. Yeah. Lots, yeah. Lots, of big, massive... lots of big personalities yeah. and yeah. obviously... In a single Even room. more balls. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So, so there's, a, there's, there's lots of partnerships, whether it's two, three, four, five or more that go well. There's lots that don't go so well. Clearly you guys have got a, a great combination between it now. For anybody else that's listening that is maybe going through some challenging times with their own business and they've got things that they want to say to their business partner but they're not sure how to approach it they are afraid of having that awkward conversation what would your advice be to, to people in that position just do it just talk yeah. just yeah. talk literally would, yeah. do you know what I, I I actually reached out to someone when we were going through all of that and they literally they gave they gave me the same thing and actually that's what spurred it was yeah. literally just 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 do it just talk it is be difficult with each other. I, I mean it's I not, think that's <laughs> the, it, it's important to realize it, it is difficult to bring it up because I mean, it must have taken us at least three, two months to to actually speak about it. But it was the best thing we'd ever done. Do you know what we tried to do as well? We tried to make sure that it wasn't about the neg, just about the negatives. No, it was. It was equally no just malicious. about the positives, mm. as much as it was about the negatives, and that was really important. And when we focused on the, the strengths and weaknesses, it was just as important because you could quite easily just turn around and say. You're no, bad at this. You're yeah. bad at this. You're bad at this. But it was it was more about, especially like from my perspective, it's like right, we need to be positive in this because that was the only way it was going to drive it forward. Yeah. If all of a sudden we were all negative, then I can guarantee it would have been a totally different. We probably would have all walked out of the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ju- you just got to get back to the where you were at the start. You 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 got into this for a reason with your business partners, whether like you say, Ben, whether it's two, three, four, however many it is, it's it's getting yourself back to that that point in time and sometimes you do need to have awkward conversations yeah. that, that drive that and people might think it's easy when there's more than one of you sharing that load and that risk it's, it's not so much more difficult it gets so much more complicated the more people you've got and because then you end up with little dynamics forming within the dynamic of four it just doesn't work sometimes but if, if you can't bite the bullet and have that conversation with a business partner or two business partners then find somebody that can yeah. I think yeah. it's probably crucial I mean we were fortunate enough that Grant's that type of person anyway Grant will, will sort it out he's a family man he's got his daughter you know he, all that cuddling and, and the arms round <laughs> the sort of thing it is Grant through and through but if we didn't have Grant we'd have struggled I think because we wouldn't have had anybody that would have just said we needed to do it yeah. and when one of, when normally when one of us says we need to do something we just get behind it and do it but if you haven't got that, find somebody that can give you that kick mediate. Off the I think. Yeah, yeah. you need to all work it. together. It needs to work together because if you can't speak to one another, then it's just not. I'd say it's not going to work as a. Hmm. Now you've already mentioned that, so you've grown from four to eight. What was the point when you realised you needed to bring your first member of staff <laughs> on board? Well, we had this client approach us, didn't we? It was a big system, essentially a web system, that I was sort of like, um, this is going to be. I mean, they gave us a timeline, and we were like, that's going to be tight if it's just yeah, me. Yeah, we were all in an hour. We were all in an hour and about, can we do this, can we not? And, and the thing is, we needed it in order to make that jump and continue to to build the business and progress. So we were like, right, we need to just, we need to find someone. And we'd already had the office at this point. So we just, we put out a job description on Indeed. We put out on anything else, can't No, it was just literally just Indeed. Yeah. Then we should put up indeed in the middle and we on got social media. The, the, yeah. the amount of shit that we got on it. <laughs> <laughs> we had people applying in, from India who were wanting to work remote and all that sort of stuff, and it was just like, this isn't going to work. And then we, we got a couple of golden nuggets and we got them in for an interview. And Jack, was, was Jack, Jack came the first in for person that we interviewed? He was. Yeah, he was Jack yeah. came, he came in for a trust. Tra- he came in for the interview. We did that. We said, oh, okay, you're just sort of just finishing uni. Yeah. Why don't you come in and do a week's trial with us? See, because for us, it's always been about making sure that they fit in. Exactly. Yeah, you can be absolutely perfect on paper. You can have all the all the accreditations and the the skills and everything. But sell yourself in an interview. Yeah, you can sell yourself in an interview and, and everything. Be completely but different. We are four big personalities, and if it doesn't marry up and it doesn't gel well, then that's that's, that's a that's a very big barrier to overcome. Yeah. And, and Jack was, Jack fit in. 
Yeah. I mean, like, he just slotted in. Like, just, it was perfect. just perfect. And, it was and just perfect. I think at first he was. It, it must be daunting going into a business where there are four business owners. Well, you kind of did all four of the hours so as well. It so was just me and Grant. That was just yeah. me and Grant. But imagine being the first employee to a business that's got four business owners. I mean, I would. I think. I mean, we don't. We don't. We don't, we don't make it feel like us. And at that point, him. <laughs> it, it, but it, because we we are so again so kind of close and. Yeah, I think I, th- I think he slotted in perfect. Yeah. He really did, and, and and we call him the OG now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah first uh, interview and led to a, an yeah. employee. That's not yeah, bad yeah. going. And so, what are some of the things that you guys do now to attract great people? And, and what do you do once they're actually in the business to try and retain them? Because I've seen a, a couple of posts on LinkedIn. So when you get somebody new joining the team, they've got their welcome card, yeah, yeah. they've got the yeah. nice balloon. So yeah. it's definitely a nice. I think it's just hello we, to the We business. want them to feel part of the team straight away as soon as they get in the welcome back was really important actually yeah, it we, was we, like uh, how do we make them as soon as they as soon as they get here how can you make them feel part of the welcome? team and yeah. we've got uh, Grant naturally picked up this hr bit of the <laughs> business and it was one of those things when we sat there and go right okay let, let's look at what structure we need as a business and how we're going to divide it all up well, clearly I can do accounting because that was my background that's what I know and we sort of, Grant was like well I fancy getting into HR and because he is that Family said, is that family man, is that cuddly person. bit, it's all about the people. It was Grant that went, we need a welcome pack, we need this, we need that, we need that. Okay, we might have been a bit last minute sometimes and running around Sainsbury's on a Sunday night. I can't imagine that. <laughs> yeah. okay, we need a box, we need a card, we haven't got everything that we need. We've had such, you know what, we've had, what's really nice is that when people do start, we've had such good feedback from from that. Uh, we do it. We do it like the welcome box, which has got we might have equipment, or it might have like literally pens, little sweets, or chocolates, or whatever it might be. Finger puppets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we have like an actual welcome document, which is really personal and really kind of. We've tried to make it as fun and welcoming as possible, and it's kind of talking about some of the serious stuff, but in a non-serious like way. Boy, yeah. yeah, talking about your holidays and your first payday and first email and stuff like that. We always make sure that when they start, they. They have their first email and it's from us and it's sort of, you know, you know welcome to the team. It's really little things, but I think a lot of the little I mean, you know, quite a lot to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a very big like experience for us as well, because three of the guys it's it's their first job. So yeah. they, they had no prior knowledge. Two no, and one and apprentice. Yeah. And yeah. There was there was no prior sort of experience there or anything. So we wanted to really give them the best experience that we could and we we got our heads together and thought, right, okay, when we were employees, what would we have liked on our yeah. first day, like a, a tour around and show just just the little things that that just that company ethos and that those values that, cool, yeah. that shows you that we are we are who we say we are. We do care, and it's it's making them feel part of that family right from day one. And we've revi- we, we, we refined it a little bit as well uh, with our latest edition, maybe. It was probably actually the best one that we did. We actually, <laughs> we actually got it to a point where, we you know, all despite there being, we're, we're all we're a small team, eight, eight's a small team, but we got a point where actually she got a bit of time with each one of us. It was a proper induction, and I know having been at other businesses that are a lot bigger, they didn't have that. You don't have any of that, and it, and and so again, we wanted to make sure that actually we were. You know, providing something that was a great experience from the off for them. And with Mamie joining us, I think it was we were conscious at that point that we were seven guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if we were recruiting for number eight, could we really bring another guy into the office? It was one of those conversations. That yeah, definitely was. Yeah. Nobody ever really. And it wasn't. Pur- about. It wasn't purposefully so. No, it just, it just happened that way. Happened that way. And you know, so yeah, I agree. It was kind but, of, I mean, conscious. We were sat in the pub. We were sat in the pub. We were down at the Darwin, having a Friday afternoon catch up and stuff. And we were sat in the pub again. You know what? We could really do with getting somebody else in, but it's they've just got to fit. Do we know anybody that could work? And we'd said, well, there's only really one person that that really really would fit in well with us and that was Mamie and she has that energy and that charisma about her you know she we'd fits worked with her before she was yeah. part of the extended marketing team that, that we had previously and we knew that she was in, invested to you know she, she's so invested in Think Through and she's been here what a month now. Yeah. yeah we I'm literally, we literally we did, we did a four today. week review today yeah. Yeah, yeah of course so that took a while so I mean me and Grant had that conversation and she's the right person for it 
it was then, okay, balance the numbers up, when's the right time to bring another person in, because every single one is more, more commitment, overhead, yes. more overheads, you've the office going, amount. you've got yeah. salaries, you've got to run payroll, Cash you've got flow. to sort out pensions and all that sort of stuff. Maybe even setting up a pension scheme, because Tom quid. was over 20, what was 500 quid? Mm -hmm. It was just like, for one person, we've got to pay 500 quid just for whatever it is, 22 quid a month in contributions or something. He was just mad. So we were sat there going, okay, let's just work out when the time is right. And I think I just messaged Mamie one night going, everything okay? And seeing how she was getting on with her job. And she sort of came back and said, well, do you fancy a job? <laughs> to which she went, yes, perfect timing. When can I start? <laughs> um, which was good. But then I said to Mamie, I said, well, look, this is, you've got to make this, do it right. Because when you leave a job somewhere, and it was the same conversations I had with the guys when they were leaving their previous role to start Think3, you never know who you might need to call on at some point. It's bridges. a small world. Yeah, so don't, if you're gonna leave a job, leave a job the right way, take the time to do it, make sure you listen to what they're saying when you're going through that process. And it took Mamie, I think, she was on a month's notice and took nine weeks to leave. She made sure that she found someone to, to fit the bill. Yeah, she yeah, agreed she'd work with it. her employer to find her replacement into it. And we said, look, look, when, whenever you're ready, the job's yours, just right. make sure you do it right. And in terms of like retaining the, the staff, I think it's, I think we've, we've managed to, 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 to build a really good culture mm. in, in, the, in the business. It's a really, like, again, it's like I might be slightly biased, but I think it's a really fun place to work. And I suppose at these early stages, they are also part of building that culture as well. Of course they are. They're, they're, they're massively part of it. And again, I think they've, they've had a lot more uh, to do with building it than probably what they are, they, they probably are aware. Yeah. And we, we, we try to have regular um, reviews with them, regular meetings with them, again, like as if it was, you know, a larger scale business. And that's to make sure that they're aware of kind of where they are, where performance-wise they are at, and also kind of just making sure that they're okay and if there's any sort of problems that they might have. Uh, and also we're looking to try and, constantly looking to try and upskill them. Try and, I'm, I'm a massive believer that, you know, when you come into a job, it's just about as much finding out how much you can get from them. And for us, we're sitting on the opposite side of that. Giving back to them. You know, it's about trying to give back to them yeah. and trying to, like, feedback, obviously, any sort of, like, advice that we can give um, despite you know having lack of experience from business we've had so much experience from uh, from what we actually do in terms of our specific areas and you know it's constantly trying to look how we can help develop them I mean it's such a massive massive piece to how you can you can retain your staff and, and, and keep that motivation internally there aren't many businesses that in 12 months go from four to eight I mean doubled in size in less than a year it's, it's fast scary. going, scary, <laughs> it is scary. And now we've run out of space in the office. Do, do you ever stop to think about it or is it just next day, next day, next day, we need to grow? Do you ever sort of step back and reflect and think, oh my gosh, we have doubled, exactly like you've said there. Is it even worth thinking about? Or have no, you just, just keep, going. keep going. Just yeah, keep just keep going. going. Yeah. Until yesterday, and, and I was slightly emotional at it yesterday, but we were going over, okay, well, what is the proudest moment that we've probably had as a business in the last 12 months? And we'll all have different ones. But mine was to sit there on Saturday morning, do my normal LinkedIn post, and the photograph I used on Saturday, which was the eight of us sat at the bar in the office, to sit there and go, actually, that's us. Yeah. That's our business, that's our team. It's a that's pretty, what it's a pretty wild moment done. that is, really. Yeah, actually, it was the first time I think I'd sat there and gone, bloody hell, we've done all right. 12 months in, and that's mm -hmm. what we've got. It's yeah. surreal, you know, we, we had a whole day off, well, half day off, and we took the guys, <laughs> well, out, a little day out, didn't we, really? Yeah, we went Give to zero latency, them. some VR, which was <laughs> absolutely bonkers. It was crazy. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, went for a nice man, went for some cocktails. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was really nice to actually give back. And again, it's, it, I think that's another a big piece in terms of like employees is about, you know, that whole, that day was about giving back to them. Yeah. Just as much as it was to have fun, it was like, you know, great job. Like, we wouldn't be here without you guys. Without you guys. Yeah.
United. And we did this at six months. Yeah, we yeah. went to hours, didn't we? The yeah. problem is now we've set a precedent, we've got to beat it every time. <laughs> yeah, so even when we got to the six, I mean, so the three month mark, we had the gala dinner for Mercia. Yeah. Six months in, we literally shut the office on a Friday and we said, right, we're going to Alton Towers for the day. <laughs> so we did Alton Towers. Nine months was pretty much the Christmas party. Yeah, it was, yeah. At the yeah, round house. And then 12 months, that was it. That was zero latency. Can't afford to keep doing every three months. Which <laughs> <laughs> gets more expensive every time we go. So, so going back to Jack, how did that feel at the time? Because obviously you guys have gone from being able to support your own income, mortgages, families, etc., to now bringing on somebody who you are going to be responsible for them being able to, to fulfil their bills and requirements. Was that a, just a straight decision, we need to happen, let's, let's do it? Or I think it's always it... in the back of your mind, isn't it? I mean, obviously, we did need someone, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to grow the business. We needed this contract in order to take things forward. It, but having overhead, which wasn't us, was scary. Oh, because it's pressure. Yeah. Because you sat that's there, someone you sat that, you, that relies on you. And obviously, we're because we're so close and our dynamic works, but he's someone that's new that we can't necessarily be open about that sort of thing. So it's sort of scary having that on your head, essentially. But and people will sit there and you say, you start a business, you do a budget, and within weeks it's gone out the window because that's not what you've achieved. And and I sit there and I go, actually, you know what? Everything in my training when I was at Cooper Parry and PKF before that says actually you should have a budget, you monitor your budget, you track your performance against it and stuff like that. It's gone out the window yeah, yeah, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that I, I probably spend every day on it is cash flow. That's We, we run, run the business based on the cash flow because that's what it's about. We, we're always looking six months out, we know... Roughly. We know what clients we think we've got ticked off. We know roughly when they're going to pay and how much they're paying. We've got the shortfall that you're always going to have because, you know, actually we've got to meet X amount to pay the bills. That's what we've got to go out and find. And it's been up and down. There's been months where, I mean, we thought at one point, didn't we? We thought we'd be struggling, struggling cash-wise as business come the end of March. And all of a sudden, that's turned around back on its head now. The and actually, of work we're now insane. going. Yeah. <laughs> we've got more work coming in now than what we need to do. Actually, it's now July, August. But you've got to get that balance right because you can't stop. You've got to always be looking at where the next job's coming from. Which is one of the things, probably, that I think, like, again, speaking on behalf of everyone, like, it's something that we've had to, to learn. It's kind of that looking forward a lot more when you're an employee. You nicely sit comfortably in your, you know, you see, and you do your job, do your job your best that you can, but you don't necessarily have to worry about all those things that Lee just mentioned. When you're owning the business, it's about okay, we need to look six months ahead. Yeah. We need to look, uh, you know, Where's that build up that pipeline. You know, yeah. obviously, if any some of the on the pipeline don't come off, it's like right, okay, how can we fill that gap? Where's the next contract coming from? And that's been a real kind of learning curve, I think, probably yeah, from, from, yeah. from our side. So staying on that looking forward theme, let's say that we're celebrating your second year anniversary <laughs> with, with another interview, we're 12 months down the line, what's changed? We've grown. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably a new office. Definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely a new office, office. yeah. We've, we've reached pretty much capacity at the moment. We've, and we've, we're looking at something at the moment, and I think that, you know, if, if we do, if there is an opportunity to... to, to to, to go to a new office, I think it's completely going to change dynamic in a real positive way. We're looking at a bigger space, we're looking at more opportunity to kind of grow as a team and just to kind of utilise the space more because we literally are... Sat on top of each other. Yeah. It doesn't help that we've got a bar. Yeah, we've got a bar office. which kind of takes up <laughs> some space. The bar's important. Yeah. Like that, yeah. I can imagine. It's yeah. a Friday afternoon displacement activity. <laughs> Do we'll nip down to B&Q and then Pops we B &Q put it all with together. Flatbed trolley. What do we need? And we'll just get some planks of wood. I'm sure we can build a bar in the office. <laughs> it's a nice little talking point, to be fair, isn't it? <laughs> but it does take up a lot of space. So we are literally at a point where we were measuring up, and we had loads of different ideas of how we could get Mamie in. And it was like we've we've thankfully found a way of, of doing it. But we are literally at a point where a new office is needed, and just just to grow the team more. I think we're on such a nice at the moment, you know, touch wood, that actually to just keep driving it forward. Double again. Double, yeah, that's what we, 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 that's what we said. S 16. That's what we said, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so there's, a couple, there's, a, year two. there's a couple of services that we want to look at going into that expand yeah, part of our yeah. portfolio, and, and I think it's just about driving forward. Now, hindsight's always a wonderful thing, but you guys have obviously, this is your first business experience and your first business experience together. If you could each pick one thing whereby you could go back to day one and do something differently, do something that you haven't done, what would it be for you, Lee? Don't steal everyone's answer. Oh, it? Yeah, don't steal it. <laughs> don't steal everyone's answer. <laughs> I agree with what Lee said. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> back to day one, what would I do differently? We, sort of, we, had we, this chat. we did. We did. We had this chat yesterday, and I, my answer was, no, I wouldn't change anything. And if you've just said, Ben, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but if you're looking backwards, you're not looking forwards. And I think because we are just go, 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 you can't change it. Whatever decision we made, right, wrong. We've did something it, yeah. or didn't do something as long as you've learned from it and you can and change we, it for the better because we, we, we have made mistakes along the way oh yeah without a doubt yeah. and we've learned from them you might have done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do <laughs> and uh, learning from them is like a massive thing and, and I agree I agree on despite even the fact literally just admitting made a big made a big mistake I still don't think they, they make you wrong. who you are today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your mistakes, everything, every every little moment, every culmination that has led to where we are now, you wouldn't change it for the world. And I think, like, I mean, I'm a believer in everything happening for a reason. And like, you, you look back over the course of the year, all those little things that look at how all, we came together. You look at the fact that we got maybe done, and we got a job together. It all worked. It was like it, one it, it all just worked, and and. I don't think you could go back and change it. No. I don't think we would be where we are now if we had changed. Even things. going through that phase of where we were starting to show cracks, I'm actually grateful for it because actually, again, we Made came off the back team. of it and yeah. actually we are better off than we ever have been. So mm. I, don't, I, you know, I don't think there's anything really. No, the positive thing about that is actually we recognised it and we did something about it. I think, I think yeah, we, we could have quite easily buried our heads in the sand and tried to just carry on doing the day-to-day -day and... Yeah, we, we could not have been sat here or it, things might have gone differently or each one of those mistakes, each one of those wins, each one of those clients, every every little thing that has has brought us all together into this massive crazy family. <laughs> yeah, we, we wouldn't change it. I might have got my tattoo a bit earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's You've got, I think, three tattoo. Both of these. Uh, yeah. we, we, we've got to, we, we all agree that me and guys will get one at the year mark. So you're in it for life now, then. <laughs> I think I'm, Can't I'm rebrand, can we? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm due mark now, aren't I? You I mean, are due. You said when part of the conversation in the beginning was... I think I just said it's like... You said you said it when we get to a year. <laughs> well, I just I brought it up one day, didn't I? I just brought it up out of the blue. I was like, should we all get a tattoo? We're just going to book you in. And then Lee was just like, yeah, let's do it. Literally, Lee's on the a day, really impulsive I person. So if, if, if someone gets said, it's like, right, yeah, I'm going to do it. There's literally a tattoo parlour like, opposite our office. So we walked to this tattoo parlour and Lee was like, have you got space today? And uh, they didn't, did they? No. But... You would have got. I mean, you you, no, you, no, did. you did because then we went to another tattoo. Brandon Luke spent the afternoon ringing around tattoo yeah. parlors, going right. Where can where can you get in this afternoon? And I was like, so right, I'll get one if we get to a year. And here we are. So so you should my see first, that on LinkedIn at some point. My first tattoo. You heard it here. You, you, you yeah, literally say, said you, it. You just said it. <laughs> you just said it on a podcast. For anybody you can't that get sees away Gaz now, you need to ask him. <laughs> you got that tattoo yet, Gaz? <laughs> the truth of that business is that Gaz is going to get a tattoo. <laughs> Well, if there's one good thing that comes out of this, <laughs> it'll be that. <laughs> so, in terms of misconceptions about being business owners, you know, in terms of what you hear from other people, you know, sometimes you think of being a business owner, you think of Elon Musk, Richard Branson, you're going to have a Ferrari in a, a few months. What are some of the misconceptions that you guys had that you found wasn't to be the case or some of the surprises that you found along the way or some of the, the misconceptions that you think other people have out there about being a business owner? I think people sort of... I think it is all glamorous and you get the, the nice cars and the, and the nice houses but for me anyway it's less about the money because it's not there at the moment <laughs> I mean touch wood eventually it will be but it's more about I mean especially for me my, my dad owned a business um, like when I was growing up and unfortunately lost it in 2008 when the recession hit so for me 
he was sort of my idol and I, I've always wanted to own my own business since that since since growing up I've always wanted to do it and I've been sort of trying bits and bobs on the side when I was younger I mean I'm still I'm only 19 about to turn 20 you know I'm extremely young and lucky as a business owner but I just I think people have a misconception that it's all happy times and you know you get a lot of money and you get I the think nice the finance cars. side of it is obviously definitely a misconception as guy says it's not like we're rocking up in, <laughs> no. in fancy cars I mean I've got a, a dent in my boots <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not fixed. we've all got dents in the <laughs> obviously that's what you um, would love long term obviously is to reap those kind of types of benefits I've got a daughter is three. I'd love to give her a particular kind of that lifestyle where you know she don't have to worry about things. It'd be amazing. But obviously, the, being a business owner is such hard work. But it's so enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, because, it is. We, because working and well, we've all done it. Worked a nine to five job. Getting into work on a Monday. That's a buzz. Yeah, it's a real buzz. About I it. mean, going going from going into work on a Monday, working a nine to five job, it's just like, oh, here we go, another Monday. Nowadays, it's like you can't wait to get into the get into work and see what the week's going to offer mm. because it's constantly changing and there's constantly new stuff happening. Yeah, and no, it's so no exciting. two days are the same. No two days are the same. And like like you said, guys, going back to that point about age, like obviously me and Gaz are the youngest of of the bunch, and it was it was that perception piece you you perceived as a business owner at nineteen and twenty two that. You, you don't know what you're on about. Yeah. You you're just playing at it. I think that's a struggle you for me. You, do, yeah, you don't you don't feel like people respect quite validated yeah. until you're in your thirties, forties, fifties. However, I, I, I still feel like that. That's I feel like everyone sort of has that imposter syndrome in, I don't feel in like business. You, you don't have you, to be any age. No, you can oh, be any I, age I can tell you. You know, whether it's been on the mic or off the mic, almost every guest that I've spoken to on the podcast has talked about imposter syndrome. Mm. Uh, well, we worked as I worked as a designer within a business. You worked as a web developer in a business, and you see. And this is not business owner right now. It's just slightly more skill set. But actually, you look at obviously agencies out there, and you look at all this stuff and winging it, winging this. <laughs> and probably the answer is. Probably, yeah. I think everybody but, is. You know, I think obviously definitely the imposter syndrome. But we don't right? shy away from anything, you know, and I think that's important. And if if someone presents us with a challenge, we face that challenge full on and we find a way to do it. Yeah. No matter what, we, you know, I think there's a client we've taken on recently that that was sort of a selling point for them. They they could tell by the way we were talking. And they, you know, we, we did a presentation. We, about, we yeah. knew what we were on about. And even if it was going to be a challenge to build their solution they trusted that we would find a way to do it no matter what and I think that that is just what we put across there's there's lots of people out there that that try to start a, a creative agency it's a competitive market as well and I think by anybody's standards you guys have had an incredibly successful first year if you could teach what it takes to build a successful business but just narrow it down to one thing what would you say that you guys have as a collective whether it's in terms of the work that you do or how you've actually built the business you have a good what would it be passion we have a, we have a dynamic that works mm. between the four of us i think we were really fortunate because we were the four of us again have our own skill set yeah. it felt like we had a mini agency before we even started mm. and actually from that i think that and we're four different heads that like grant said all have different skill set and we if we need to know something, whether it's strategic, whether it's video, whether it's design, whether it's tech related, we know we have each other to call on. I mean, yeah, it's, it's essentially about surrounding yourself with people that, you know, I'm not an expert in my development. I have no idea. I work close with guys every day, still don't know <laughs> kind of how he does what he does. Same with video. It's about surrounding yourself with people that are experts at something and it's about leaning on them and admitting when you don't know yeah. how to do something. I think that's really a real, you know, the thing and just going, to do. probably going back to staff quickly as well. We've always said that you want your staff to be ten times better than you. Yeah, we've always said because that because that's how you grow your business. I mean, it, it's worked for us, I think, as a business because we have got those individual yeah. skill sets yeah. around it. Whether it's Gaz being technical, Grant being creative, 
Luke around his production capabilities and, and me thinking right where next what do we do let's manage the finances and that sort of stuff we've been lucky that the four of us together have been able to produce something that a bigger agency out there can do because we do we offer the full suite of everything that, that the likes of your purpose media would or even let's go there say champions in some in some respect actually we've got that skill set within the team we're not just a we don't just do websites, we don't just do branding and all that sort of thing. And having the four of us to be able to go, right, that's your bag. You can lead on that one. Or, Gaz, go and see that person because, actually, you know what? We need you there to talk the technical language because I can wing some conversations, but I can't wing that one. <laughs> so if you're going to start out from, from scratch or go into this sector, I think the biggest thing that you've got to do is probably just have an understanding and confidence in yourself because mm. you are opening you're opening yourself up to criticism completely massively, massively. other people will and i'm sure they do with us yeah. that they'll look in from the outside going oh it was a bit of crap wasn't it it wasn't very good at what you've put out there and you've got to be as many people have said to you, Ben, on, the, on these podcasts, is you have to be resilient. You've got to take the knocks, but you've got to bounce back from them. And especially when there's four of us relying on each other to do that, it's okay. If one of us has got a down day, the business can open. survive. There's yeah. three other people doing it. Yeah. But if you're a, a sole trader, a one-man band, or even a partnership, husband and wife, trying to go into business together... You've got to have somebody that you can lean on, I think, mm. to Possibly. do that. Whether that is your other half at home, and I think all of our other halves realise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spend more time with each other and talking to each other than, than we, we do, do probably them. talking yeah. to them. But they, at the same time, they realise that they are yeah. part of our family in the Think3 culture sense, yeah. that it's not just the four of us. It's the four of us, it's the four staff, it's our four partners. We even expanded that family piece to actually include, it's, it's our clients. Because we can't do our business if it wasn't for them. Yeah. Hopefully we help them grow at the same time with what we're doing. It's, it's, you've, you've got to have that network of people around you that you can call on. And call on on, on the them. back of that whole network piece, I mean, when we, when we were looking to start, and again, I was, I was nervous about, again, having a lack of experience. I got in touch with multiple business owners that I thankfully had built up a network with over years of working and just had a chat with them I'm like look like, how have you done it I just tried to get some of that advisory piece and just I think that massively helped me at the start just to kind of get a bit of confidence that okay you were actually in the same position as what I was at the start having the same thoughts as what I was despite me from the outside looking and thinking you're absolutely smashing it you were still in the same position I was at the start, and actually, just I, like I said, I, I leaned on people that that had, had already kind of were in a really great position, and yeah, they, that helped me out massively. I think from a confidence perspective. And so, I'm presuming then that the feedback that you got from those business owners was quite supportive and encouraging. Yeah, it was definitely. It was, I mean, most of the time, it was literally just go for it. You know, you will regret it if you don't. Really. So actually. Again, some of them that, that I spoke to at the start, they really were, yeah, they were, for me, again, I was probably out of the four of us, I was the one that had the most outs because, again, young family, literally not long moved in, really, to my, <laughs> to, to my new house as well, and it was like, you okay, <laughs> yes, and it was a bloody expensive one as well, <laughs> and uh, it was like, okay, I'm nervous about leaving this cushy job, so I found my way of trying to deal with that by leaning on those people just as much as leaning on these guys it was also talking to people that have gone through it and you know thankfully like I said they gave me good advice to <laughs> where we are now really so and how was the support from family and friends when particularly the younger guys Luke and Gaz when you said that you were going to be starting a business for yourself and becoming self-employed I think for me like because my dad had already in his business and literally throughout my childhood all he was saying was you need to own your own business because it's he lost his and it, I think it broke him and it just as it, it, it as it has like our whole family because losing that business then was such a 
big loss to him from a morale perspective. Uh, I think like there was a lot of time where our family was sort of low. They were low points. Um, but he's always said to me that you know you need to start on your own because you've got the skill set and you know you can do it. And I was just lucky enough to to be paired with these these guys because I wouldn't have been able to do it without the, th- the three of them. Definitely. My my family background is a bit of a weird one. I lost my dad two years ago to cancer, unfortunately. So a massive, massive motivation for me was making making him proud and making my mum proud and everything. Just, I never really thought I'd be in this position. Whereas Gaz, from a very young age, knew that he wanted to be a business owner. This was never really something that I aspired to do, but it's also something that I wouldn't change for the world. And obviously the, these guys have become my extended family, vice versa and everything. And yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I'm good. it's emotional. Gone. It's gone. Yeah, it's, it's gone. emotional. It's gone. Um, yeah. Well, you, so you, the people around you were supportive. When yeah, you said, it's, it's, it's you surrounding yourself with, with a strong unit that can support you when, when times are dark and when everything seems to be going tits up and then can also celebrate with you and yeah. drink you under the table when everything's going <laughs> absolutely amazing. Well, no one can drink Luke under the table, just to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, I think it is about that, isn't it, really? Like, my like, partners have been massive help throughout the whole mm, thing, yeah. and they've been part of the journey. I think Lee mentioned it earlier. They've been part of the journey with us. And like, I've, and like I said, I've, I think I spoke to my wife every single night, probably winding her up every single night, badgering on about the fact of, can we do it? Should I do it? Yeah. And she was just like, just do it. I think that's just the thing do it. as well, like because I know my girlfriend as well. When we when we were working at our previous employer, we were travelling a lot up to Birmingham, um, which was long, long, long hours where we weren't getting back till late. We were leaving ridiculously early in the mornings. It just didn't work for us. And I like I don't I think none of us were happy. And I was going home to my girlfriend and being like this is not where I want to be this is not where I see myself going this isn't a career that I'm not enjoying it and she like similarly to uh, all of us really I mean she just said you just got to do it because if you don't then you're going to be working a nine, well, longer than 9 to 5 job that you just absolutely are not enjoying and we just did it and so you guys are obviously successful business owners yourself you work with a lot of other business owners through through the work that you do. If you could pick one attribute each that you think are required to build a successful business and, and be successful entrepreneurs, what would you say? We'll start with you, Gaz. Put it in one word. I think passion for me. Passion and dedication. That's, that's, that's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> you pinched somebody else. <laughs> Sorry, then, before uh, Gaz takes <laughs> yeah. I think I think Lee said it so I'm actually doing this from Lee. Uh, resilience. I think that's a that's a really big one actually. When did I know that was coming? <laughs> <laughs> Again, having made mistakes, just picking yourself up and bouncing back. I think that's yeah. So I think that's a massive piece really for for any business owner. Really? Emotion, I'd say. In what way? In whatever way it affects you, if you know what I mean. I, we we all have our reasons for doing what we're doing. We all have our own little things that get us out of bed in the morning. And I think that is a massive thing that drives each and every person every single day to do what they want to do, to achieve what they want to achieve. And at the end of the day, without your own steam power, you're not going to get anywhere. So I think emotion plays a massive, massive part in that. Lee? Since you stole resilient, I'm stealing. I'm going a different one. <laughs> I'll say strength then. So it's similar to resilience in that way, just a different word. <laughs> well, I suppose resilience is bouncing back, but strength is just Power facing through. challenges yeah. head on, isn't Going it? Really? Forward. You've got to. And it comes back to that point I made earlier about if, if you're looking backwards and fretting about things and you're not focused on actually what's coming next, then you've got to be able to power your way through some of these things. Yes, you're going to have tough days. You get to the end of the month and you've got payroll to pay and you think, bloody hell, what do we need to do about that? But you, you've got to just keep motoring through because a business like ours, and we know this, can only succeed 
when the four of us still want to do it. Yeah. I think we could we could survive with three if we ever needed to, but actually having the four of us all going in that same direction, all wanting similar, they don't have to be the same, similar outcomes from it, and all pushing forward and making sure that everything that we do is for the benefit of the business, taking the selfishness out of it, because there are three other people that rely on whatever decision I might make or have a conversation with somebody, to be able to just keep going forward in the same direction as everybody else and having that strength to to keep going and pick yourself up and, and get on with it, I think is okay. vital. Great answers, no, some great answers there. Thank you for that. Now I'm gonna put your creative brains to the test. If you could write a book about your journey so far, and it's been a short one, but it's been packed with uh, adventures and stories and challenges, what would you call the book? I've got the answer to this. I thought about it last night. Given our motto, and I don't even know where it came from, <laughs> but there's always been, make it happen. Can we, can we have the same book idea across the board? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not mine. Think <laughs> three, the yeah. story of Think 3. It's, it's not an autobiography. Yeah. You, we write it collectively. Well, an autobiography would be collectively. It would be some weird word for it. But I think it would be, we made it happen. Yeah, it's got to be. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. I I had one earlier, which is, instead of the the four musketeers, you got the four marketeers. So, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I like that. Join the team off the back of that. I like that one. <laughs> All right. So no, I like that. So you go out there to make it happen, but you've made it happen for yourself. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That. I, that's I like that. That is. I like that. So I've just got a couple more questions before I let you guys go. And thank you for being so open and honest. I, I've really enjoyed this interview. I had no idea how it's going to go with the with the four of you, but I think you've all you've all done really well and you've shared some amazing stuff. So thank you. So my first one being, if you could summarise everything that you've learned in business so far, and we were sat in front of somebody who was you guys twelve months ago that was deciding whether to take the plunge or not and start a business for themselves, and you could give them. One piece of advice each. We'll start with you, Lee, this time. Yeah. <laughs> what would be your one piece of advice to this person who's thinking of starting a business? If you're going to do it, throw everything at it. Luke? Do something that you're passionate about. Do something that you care about. If you, if you don't have a passion for it and you don't have a reason for doing it, then you, you'll put it off, you'll procrastinate, you just you won't do it. Uh, don't be afraid to make a mistake. I think that's uh, a really important one. I think obviously that's ultimately where you learn most of your lessons from. So, and guys, for me, it's to I tell myself to listen and support one another because without that, we wouldn't be where we are. <laughs> no, good stuff there, definitely. And my final question for you: If anybody listening wants to find out more about you as individuals, or they're interested in finding more about the services that Think Free provides, where can we find you? Well, we're all on LinkedIn. You can visit us at our website, which is thinkthrough.co.uk. And it's the number three. It's the number three, word, yeah. yeah. Number three, yeah. So, so we're, we're kind of always available, uh, LinkedIn or are on our website. And yeah, he's got his LinkedIn. Uh, Lee posts Saturday, 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 Saturday updates. Saturday updates there. <laughs> we should quite quickly just become a, a thing. It's hard you work, know? though, doing that. Yeah. It's, a pop it's, it's having to... <laughs> and actually, and if anything, it, because it is real... Like the conversations we've had, it, it's it's a very quick sum up of the week of what we've been up to. Yeah, and I think again, like we've talked about today, you know, you're very honest with your updates. Mm. You do give an inside look at what it's like to build a business, and they're they're definitely gaining a lot of momentum now. So, yeah. so all of those contact details will be included in the show notes if anybody fancies checking them out at benjaminbrain.co.uk forward slash think three. So that wraps it up for today, guys. So I just want to say again, thank you so much for, for coming on the show and sharing some time with us. I know how busy you must be. So the fact that you've taken out some time to share your truths with us, much appreciated. I want to wish you all the best, especially for the next 12 months. It sounds <laughs> like you've got you. a lot coming up. Thank congratulations on all of your success so far because, like you say, it's not easy to build a business and, and what you guys have achieved is incredible for the 12 months. So well done and uh, looking forward to seeing more of it. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much for having us, mate. And Cheers. to all the listeners, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support and look forward to catching up with you on next week's episode of The Truth About Business. 
one final thing before you go. If you enjoyed this interview and want to make sure you don't miss out on the next episode with another real life business champion, make sure you subscribe via iTunes, Spotify, your favorite podcast app, or by visiting my blog at benjaminbrain.co.uk and hitting subscribe. At the blog, you'll also find the show notes to this episode, which includes all the relevant links to the website, social media channels, contact details, and anything else that was discussed in the episode. Just type in the name of the guest and that will bring that right up for you. And finally, I'm always on the search for great business owners who would be happy to spare just a couple of hours of the time to share their business experience with our audience. So if you know of anyone that would make a great guest or you'd like to feature yourself, just let me know. Send an email to hello at benjaminbrain.co.uk and I'll reply personally as soon as possible. Also, if you've got any feedback, questions that you'd like me to ask our guests or any other suggestions, I am definitely all ears. That email address again is hello at benjaminbrain.co.uk. So that's it for this episode. I just want to thank you sincerely for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay hungry, stay fearless, get out there and make it happen.